The purpose of a tunable monochromator is to convert a broad band spectral input into a narrow band output. That is, many wavelengths enter and only one or a very few exit the monochromator. This narrow band output can be used to excite a molecular species, as in fluorescence or phosphorescence spectroscopy, to excite an atomic species, as in atomic emission spectroscopy, or actually any number of generic absorption experiments. In an absorption spectroscopy experiment, light that is absorbed by an analyte contained in the sample cell is used as a means of determining the amount of analyte present, usually via a calibration curve. Again, the amount of light absorbed at a specific wavelength reflects the amount of analyte in a sample during the absorption. Although there are many different versions of monochromators, the flavor that we shall examine here is called a Cherney-Turner design. It uses two slits, two mirrors, and a grating. The light from most lamps contains so many different wavelengths that our eyes interpret this mix as white. That's what white light actually is a mixture of many different colors or wavelengths. The monochromator takes this white light input and, using a well-machined slit made of two parallel pieces of metal spaced very close together, it allows the source beam to fall on the first mirror inside the monochromator cavity. If you could put your eye here at the first mirror, you would see bright white light coming from the source. This mirror's job is to reflect the incoming light, now shaped like the hole from the entrance slit, and collimate that light and allow it to fall on the grating. In older instruments, a prism would be used here instead of a grating. The collimation process makes all of the light rays reflected onto the grating parallel to each other. That is, they do not diverge as they travel from the first mirror towards the grating. If you could put your eye here at the grating, you would again see bright white light coming from the collimating mirror. The surface of the grating has a series of very finely etched ridges or grooves with very specific spacing. This groove surface is also coated with a highly reflective material such as gold or aluminum which reflects the light striking it with high efficiency. Collimated light reflected from the first mirror and, remember, shaped in an image of the entrance slit reflects off of the surface of this grating. Now an extremely important thing happens. This grating reflection process involves combinations of constructive and destructive interferences of the incoming light rays as they bounce off of the reflective surface. This process separates the many individual wavelengths of light from the white light source into rays of light no longer traveling parallel with each other. Instead, each wavelength is, in effect, reflected at a slightly different angle off of the grating surface and is aimed toward the second mirror. This light separation process is called dispersion and is the heart of what is occurring in this monochromator. Individual wavelengths are separated in space. If you could put your eye at the second mirror looking back at the grating, you would no longer see white light. Instead, you would see a series of closely spaced colored light bands. The second mirror in this instrument reflects the light from the grating and focuses it at the plane of the exit slit. But since the light rays arriving from the grating are dispersed in space, when they reflect off the focusing mirror, they are again passed on at slightly different angles toward the exit slit. This mirror is designed to collect and focus each wavelength in each band onto a different spot on the exit slit plane. Ergo, when these light bands arrive at the exit slit, they form a series of closely spaced individual colored bands grouped by wavelength. If you could look at the back of the exit slit, you would see a rainbow of light shaped like the entrance slit. As our movie shows, all red light rays converge on one spot near the exit slit, all greens at another, all blues at a third, and so on. Therefore, when the monochromator is tuned to the blue wavelength, say 425 nanometers, the blue light rays are focused onto the slit itself and all other wavelengths strike the inside wall of the monochromator around the exit slit and are absorbed. This is why monochromators are internally painted black, to absorb this and any scattered light flying around inside the monochromator cavity. Finally, notice that the photomultiplier tube, or PMT, sees only blue light that is passed through the sample cell from the monochromator. 
The second tuning step in our movie shows a very slight adjustment of the position of the grating in modern instruments controlled by a computer, and therefore a slightly different reflection angle of the light rays striking the grating. This translates into a slightly different position of the wavelength bands at the plane of the exit slit. In this case, the monochromator has been tuned to allow 500 nanometer, that is green light, to pass through the exit slit, and all other wavelengths, including the blue 425 nanometer light from before, to be blocked. As can be seen, the PMT now detects the 500 nanometer light's intensity. And again, analyte content will be determined via a calibration curve that plotted absorbed light at a specific wavelength versus known analyte concentrations.